Hi guys, it's Chris. In this video, I'm going to give you five good tips on how to pass your statistic class. So, just to give you a little background story about myself, I recently passed the statistic class at the Technical University of Denmark, but I had a little struggle with it. And there were some things, some, some, some uh, tips that got me through, and those tips are the ones that I want to share with you guys. So, tip number five, make use of YouTube. There are so many channels and videos out there on YouTube who are doing so well at teaching you all the basics and advanced about statistics. So I really recommend you guys going out there finding those channels. I will link uh, many of them in the description as well. I use them to like learn the difference between the distributions and stuff like that because when when you want when you're watching a video it's just so much easier to remember when a, a human being is talking to you and you're not just reading from a book so I really recommend you guys going out there on YouTube and finding those videos because it helped me a lot also at night when I had to go to sleep I took my iPad and and watched the videos on my iPad as well um, it really helped me you know, all the information just sank into my brain and I remember it the next day. Sometimes I dreamed about it, it sounds crazy, but I mean, the videos help a lot. I will provide you guys with links to those channels that help me out with statistics. I will do that in the description below. Go check that out in the end of this video. Talking about videos and books, this leads us to tip number four. Read the book. I know guys, it can be really boring reading everything from a book, but it's necessary because there are so many details in the book and all the information that you actually need is in the book. So it will be easier for some than others, but you gotta get through it because it gives you so much more information about it. For me personally, I actually think it was kind of hard to get through the book, even though it's only 500 pages, which is a lot for me, maybe not for other people. but. The thing that helped me through it was that I didn't look at the full extent, you know, I didn't look at the full picture of, oh, I gotta read nine chapters of 500 pages. I mean, I didn't look at it this way. I looked at one page at a time, one chapter at a time. So I said, okay, I gotta get started. Let's just get started with one page at a time, one word at a time, and just slowly progressing slowly crawling through the book like that so I read one page got two pages became three pages and soon I actually finished the book um, so that's quite nice and I would like to share a small quote with you guys start by doing one push-up start by drinking a cup of water start by paying towards one debt start by reading one page start by making one sale Start by deleting one old contact, start by walking one lap, start by attempting one event, start by writing one paragraph, start today, repeat tomorrow. That's a quote that actually got me through the book because I didn't look at the full picture of I gotta read 500 pages, I gotta get finished, oh my god, I just got started, read one page at a time. Another thing that I actually experience sometime when I read a book is that if I read for long periods of time, um, I start to think about, I mean, other stuff. I mean, I, I keep on reading the book, but I'm thinking of something else. So I'm not really 100% focused. And when I catch myself in this situation, I just stop. I mean, I go somewhere where I can get something to eat, maybe something to drink, clear my mind. And then I start again from actually from where I started to think of something else. If I have to read a... 10 pages again, I do it. Because it is so necessary that you are 100% focused about what you're reading and not doing anything else, you know, in the meantime. This brings us to tip number three, put pressure on exercises. So you will go to a lecture where a lecturer or a professor will be talking about some specific topic in statistics and teaching the basics and don't get me wrong this is is really important that you stay focused here as well really listen to your lecturer and learn everything about that topic just make everything sink in and try to really remember so but the important part I think is the exercises afterwards I mean you would typically go out and have to do some laps and those are the ones that really count because 
when you do the math yourself, you really learn how to do the calculations, how to handle the problems, how to think in general when getting a question in statistics. So this is the important part. And I mean, spend the time that you need. If you don't finish the exercise, it's important that you go home or just stay a little longer to actually get them finished. Because those exercises will most likely come and hit you in the face in the exam because the exam is typically based on the ex exercises really important tip remember that this brings me to tip number two prepare with old exam sheets my exam was a written exam it could have been an oral exam but it was a written exam and i think that in many cases around the world statistical exams will be written exams because you will have to prove that you can't do the statistical calculations on a piece of paper or on your computer so that's why I think that but I could be wrong for me it was really helpful that my lecturer provided me and the other students with the exam sheets from the past years so we were able to take those exam sheets look at the questions and actually calculate the exam sheets from the past year it gave me a great perspective of what was expected from me, what topics was hard for me, um, where I should put my focus in the exam, and stuff like that. So if you are going to a written exam and you don't have the exam sheets from the past, I would definitely recommend you contact your lecturer by email or in person and try to get hold of those exam sheets from the past because they really help you out and they give you a great perspective on what is expected from you. And then finally, we have the last tip number one, find a mentor. This is, if you're really struggling in this class, it helps you so much to find a mentor who can teach you one-to-one, -one, face to face, how to solve some of those exercises. Because when sitting physically with a person who knows the material, knows the stuff and knows how to do the statistical calculations, it just gives you so much more than reading it all from a book or indeed watching it from a YouTube video. This mentor could be anyone from the student assistant to the actual lecturer or any other guy who knows statistics. And I know this will probably cost you some money in private, but if you're really struggling with the class, this will with 100% guarantee help you out and give you so much more knowledge about the different statistical topics and it will help you get through the exam. So this is everything I have for now guys. Follow those tips, those are the tips that got me through and I really struggled with the class. If I can do it, you can definitely do it. So follow some of them, if not all of them, because they will get you through. Keep on reading, writing, calculating, watch videos and be persistent. That's the important part. You gotta keep on acquiring new knowledge and eventually you are going to get through. No worries. So guys, as I said, this is everything I had. Like the video below, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you wanna see more in the future. Otherwise, take care and be calm.